So how do you actually find top projects like for example Goblin Town that has been trending so much in the last few weeks? I'm going to discuss that in this video. We're going to go through exactly how you would appraise a new NFT project and the things you would look out for. And one thing you have to understand is this process has changed a lot, uh, even compared to say six months ago. And the thing you have to remember about this is the process has changed. When I first started in uh, trading NFTs, the process I was using was completely different. In fact, even the process you using two, three months ago will be different now. And the reason for that is, for example, Goblin Town, they don't even have a Discord. They literally launch without any roadmap. And most people look at that and they think, you know, uh, uh, they think to panic. But there's a, a reason why Goblin Town's done so well. And that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. And then when you have a think about how it really works, what really pushes NFTs, what the few NFTs do differently that makes them stand out from all of the competition, then you'll really understand how to appraise them in future because the space is moving so quickly and we're getting new innovation all of the time. So let's discuss that. So I'm here on OpenSea and you can see Goblin Town their floor price at the moment is 2.8 and they've done so far 41,000 uh, ETH in volume since launch. So a massive amount. Now this was a free mint. And in this particular collection, you can see uh, even if you're completely new to NFTs, we're going to talk about a few more advanced ideas in this video. But even if you're brand new, one thing you'll be able to notice very quickly is that there is something unique about the artwork. What's unique about it? Well, it's very different to what you commonly see. Now, I'm not saying there isn't, there haven't previously been collections uh, where there have been pictures of uh, goblins or something similar, but generally some of the better collections, they've gone for the more um, pristine, let's call it pristine <laughs> looking PFPs because that's what people want. So what they did was they flipped the script here and they said, we'll go for the ugliest PFP possible. And I'm sure those of you who have been in the space for a while, when you first saw a picture of a goblin, you're probably thinking, what the hell is this? That's exactly what they were trying to do, intending to do. They garnered your attention there immediately. And they're almost appealing to a completely different crowd, to, to people who don't care about the establishment or the established blue chip projects, or even hate secretly the blue chip projects. So they are appealing to that kind of market. And uh, with that, they did really, really well. Now they have another collection as well, which is called the McGoblin. So a spin really on uh, McDonald's uh, meals. And this collection is doing particularly well as well. We'll discuss why it's pumped uh, recently in just a minute. Um, but this collection also doing really well. And it's done uh, 4,000 Ethereum in volume so far. You can see it's holding a very healthy floor price. And there's 8,000 items in this collection. And in this, you've got the standard 10,000 collections. They didn't try and do anything fancy in terms of the number of units. What they were concentrating on in terms of innovation were first of all the artwork and then the other things we're going to get onto in just a minute. So let's go on to their Twitter now. This is their Twitter page. They've got 122,000 followers. So as you've heard me mention before, if you've been following my channel for a while and if you haven't, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I'll be releasing a lot of educational videos like this here on the channel. You can see they've got 122,000, but a lot of that grew after their launch. When they launched, they had a lot less but they don't have a Discord. So they're relying purely on organic Twitter growth. And because there's no Discord, there's nowhere where the community can really talk as such. So what they basically created was this scenario where basically people are using Twitter to actually discuss the project, which is, again, it's innovative, it's different. Whether it will stand the test of time, I have uh, mixed feelings on that because I, I don't know, it's really hard to say. However, this collection, I think long term will still do well just because if you look at the history of NFTs, any new NFT that's been the first in its new niche, the first style of something, the OG, generally they tend to do very well long term. And you get a lot more investor types, blue chip investors, whale investors, they go for these projects and they just hold them forever and are happy to uh, take the swings. Whereas people who have no money, they panic. They, they'll buy something like this and it goes down 20% and they'll panic and sell um, paper hands, uh, <laughs> which is commonly called, uh, called in the space. Now, what was different about their Twitter? Now here, if you scroll and I did go uh, do a lot of digging and I went back to when they literally first started. They've got so many tweets on here because what they tend to do is retweet everything that has Goblin Town WTF tagged into it. And I don't know if it's, I'm not sure if it's every single one or they just select uh, which ones they prefer. 
but it could be at every single one and they could even have it on automatic you know uh, on autopilot mode where they're using software so that it just automatically retweets which is uh, quite possible too but remember when they first launched their whole marketing plan was on twitter alone which in theory is unique because they're doing it uh, without a discord and they're relying on organic growth alone and what's really innovative is their counter culture approach so they were literally appealing to those people who didn't care about having the fanciest best looking uh, pfp uh, which when you think about it is quite different and when we look at their first ever kind of website when they uh, now started so let me show you a picture of that this was it this is what it looked like again very different very innovative it was almost like a, a text a uh, conversation text messaging conversation <laughs> between two different goblins um and that was really cool and they were very mat matter of fact in the way that they uh, approached um the website they were very honest and transparent it says it right here no roadmap no discord no utility contract wasn't actually written by goblins we're reserving 1000 goblins because we want to and that's it and then hashtag <laughs> #goblin follow goblin and that was the end of it and that's really cool as well because that's rarely seen within this uh, space they're just being very very clear on what they were doing there now the problem they had was after launch everybody started jumping on their backs asking will there be any utility in future you know once it really took off and i'm not sure the founders knew it would take off as well as it did and i think maybe it was market conditions as well people really wanted some something different kind of cheering up almost so i think that favored them the fact that it was bear market conditions ironically and the fact that it was a free mint which again was kind of a new uh, meta at the time and there were many bigger collections doing free mint or even considering it now let's go through some numbers let's go through some stats with goblin town and i want to show you the blue chip holders as well in this particular collection just before i do that on our discord on nft wizards we're doing some very special features for uh, those of you who hold uh, goblins goblin nfts goblin town nfts and also muck goblin nfts if you join our discord and you'll see the uh, in the description below there's a link there if you join you'll get some extra special features on our discord i won't give anything else away but wh when you go there you'll see exactly what i mean we've actually set up our discord so that it accepts via the clablan bot it actually verifies that you're holding one of these nfts and then you'll see um, exactly what you get So what I actually wanted to show you here is a couple of the other uh, kind of dashboards here I have including the holder number and here you can see blue chip holders out of all of the holding 1592 so nearly 40% of all are considered blue chip holders what that usually means is they're holding one of the other blue chip collections now one of the other blue chip collections their floor prices are very high if you think about mutant apes board ape etc so the fact that those type of investors are involved here in a big way is in my opinion significant now whether they were buying when the price was like 7 or 8 eth or whether they bought recently i don't know but then you've also got number of whales 68 this is defined as those ho holding over a million dollars worth of in nfts now the problem is because people have so many different kind of wallets and stuff it's very difficult to track this stuff accurately and then there's another thing whether this type of stuff is actually meaningful when it comes to uh, analysis wh whether it means long term it will do well i can certainly say that these type of stats you tend to see early on in collections that potentially could have a lot of value long term so if you think of azuki for example in the first few weeks you were seeing these types of numbers uh, from what i recall and this is another interesting chart so how long people are actually uh, holding uh this particular collection now obviously it's very early days because it's only been 30 days but what you're looking to see on these types of charts are a, a bigger proportion holding this for the longer term less and less people flipping them for a day or two there'll still be some doing that especially if the floor price tends to go up because you can make a quick eth if somebody accepts your offer and you get something that's undervalued perhaps and there's nothing wrong with that but that's another thing i'm looking at in this particular collection long term the original goblin collection i mean and this profit leaderboard i've discussed before on youtube a lot but it's really cool so on different types of software you get this <laughs> and this this is always nice because it puts things in perspective in this massive bear market where people think they can't flip anything for any type of profit you've got a few addresses here that are flipped this particular collection for ridiculous numbers we're talking quite a few with over a quarter of a million us dollars um just in flipping uh this particular collection now obviously it would have been a lot of nfts that they would have bought but 
when they were first launched, the, the price was free and then it was very cheap thereafter too. The other thing I like to look at is a kind of number of listings as well. Not the most reliable, but generally longer term, you expect this to drop over time. And if you go back kind of 30 days or so, the thing with the listings is it's been reasonably consistent. I wonder then in the future, if you get to a point that that slowly starts to reduce. I'm just making sure I've got the whole chart here. Yeah. So basically, that's another thing I'm looking at. And also the floor price, which has been trending downwards ever since that peak. Are we going to then get support and go sideways for a while? And then we get a supply shock and then we get a breakout in this particular collection. Because at the moment, people are still flipping. The original people who minted are making decisions about whether uh, they should just sell now for 2.8 or 3 ETH and move on or what they should do about that. And then obviously, investors are making decisions here as well. And it's not just obviously the NFT price. That's the issue right now. It's the price of Ethereum in general and the uncertainty in the crypto market. And the problem you have here when you look at the floor depth, so this is basically at different prices, how many listings there are. You can see there's a lot of resistance uh, going up. But then after, potentially it could lighten up. But this is also not reliable this early after a launch because if we did move up to 4 ETH, then we could have another two, 300 listings at 4 to 5 to 6 ETH anyway. So this is not particularly reliable at the moment, in my opinion. So that's my quick kind of review there. I hope some of those insights actually help you see how things are changing and how fast things are changing now. We, you, what you're really trying to look for is, is there a project that's doing something a little bit different, innovative? So that, that doesn't only go for artwork. It could go for the whole structure. It could go for the roadmap. It could go for the marketing. It can even go for the contract, which is what we've seen recently in Moonrunners. And we'll see how that goes too. Because innovation there is again, something new within the space. There's just too many projects. Like we saw how many ape derivatives there were a few months ago, literally thousands and thousands of collections. And unfortunately, because they did nothing apart from just a slightly better or slightly different uh, type of artwork, there was nothing else going on there with the collection. They're not doing very well right now for that reason. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll be back with another one soon. Thanks for listening.